Okay, so okay, so um, now that we've done with defining what linear momentum is, of course you can have changes in this momentum, and that change in momentum we could also define it to some quantity known as impulse. So that will be the the um, the discussion for this part uh, for for this part of the lecture. Okay, now. Of course, um, rewriting the Newton's second law in terms of momentum, you can see that, okay, the net force is again the change, the change in momentum per time. Um, in general, this net force is a function of time, and therefore we can um, uh, solve for p vector in terms of, um, of f net, we're we just basically integrating it. But for now, let us assume that this force is some average force, so, okay? Ayo kasi natin ng integration sa physics seven. What? So let's say you have a, some average force, and for some average force, this time derivative becomes basically change in momentum per time. Kasi parang nalalayo niyo instantaneous velocity niyo, binalik yung sa average velocity. Parang ganon din dito. You have um your instantaneous force as a fu force time um function. Um instead of doing that, we go to the average force. Um let's say f average, which is just equal to the change in momentum per time. Okay, now we can solve for the change in momentum, multiplying both sides by delta t. We see that f average delta t is just simply delta p. And we can define this f average delta t. And that's, that um, quantity there is called the impulse j. Some books will write it as i, by the way. Um, other books will write it as i. But for Young and Friedman, it is j, i vector. Okay, so um, therefore, we see that if j is equal to f average delta t, then j is just equal to the change in momentum. Impulse is the change in momentum. Okay? Yun lang yun. <laughs> yun lang talaga yun. So impulse is the effect of the average net force, f net, on the motion of an object during some time interval delta t. So yun. Again, um, in, treat, uh, in problems involving momentum, usually this time interval delta t is very, is very small. Remember, collisions ang, ang gusto natin puntahan ng problems ay collisions. Kaya dapat yung contact time between two objects, usually, medyo maiksi yan. Medyo maiksi yan. Nasa milliseconds yan. Okay? So, um, for a constant net force acting on an object, its impulse imparted on that object is given by J, which is equal to F average delta T. So, it's just the product of the average force times time. In a more formal context, actually, J is still an integral of the force as a function of time d time from t1 to t2. This is actually a more formal definition of what the impulse is. But again, we will only focus on the average force imparted on a system. Kasi again, mahirap naman hanapin yung f, del f of t dyan. So I'm mabil malaki at the same time, yung time na tritik ng action ng force na yan. Okay? So yun. Now, j is just equal to f average sometimes, sometimes, some multiplied by some um, final time minus initial time, the difference in two times. So, uh, okay, so it's of course a vector quantity because again, force is a vector quantity uh, and um, it also in, points in the same direction as the net force, okay? So there's a unit, is Newton second, which is actually equivalent to kilogram meter per second. Note that they have the same um, impulse and momentum uh, have the same units. Pansin nyo, di ba? Paras dapat units yan. But, um, uh, in our context, must gamit yung newton second when you define what impulse is. Uh, must gamit yung newton second as an SI unit. Uh, but of course, they're the same. <laughs> they're equivalent. Uh, okay? Questions? Uh, may tanong? May tanong ba rito? Wala? Wala? Okay, wala naman. Sige, now. So, again, kung nakita nyo na to kanina na J is equal to delta P, that's basically your momentum impulse theorem or impulse theorem moment. Uh, impulse momentum theorem, that's F average delta T is delta P. And if you, um, this is actually J or your impulse, and therefore we see that J is just delta P. And hence, you have J is delta P or P2 minus P1, implying that the impulse is the change in the momentum of an object. So we have the momentum impulse theorem, or in some books, it's impulse momentum theorem. Okay? That's the momentum impulse theorem. So uh, we have shown that the impulse is the change in the momentum of an object or of a system. Clear by on? Clear ba? Again, so again, impulse is the change in momentum. So now, okay, you have force and impact duration. So uh, again, in a more formal context, your impulse is actually an integral. It's the area under the curve of the force time plot. So, um, so again, um, Average, ganyan yung niya. So you can define this graph here. So um, if uh, 
if, if this F average denotes the average force exerted on the system, then the area bounded by this curve, uh, um, the area bounded by this curve is the same as this area here bounded by some force function over the same time interval, delta T. Uh, kung naalala nyo, anong theorem yan sa calculus? Bakit totoo to? Di ba meron tayong tinatawag na mean value theorem for integral? So you can also do that. You can actually do that. There is a relationship between this function here, this set function here, and this average force here. Yes, you can use the mean value theorem to show that, okay, they have the same area. But for now, ang sabihin na lang natin muna, um, the area of this red curve here is equal to the area of this green um, of this green shaded region here. Parehas ang area yan. Because you're talking of this average force over the same time interval as this uh, force function here. Again, let me just uh, emphasize that the force here is a function of time. It is not a function of position. Function of time yan. So, okay. Now, the impulse is the area under the FT curve. Uh, and sometimes, if you sometimes there are cases that uh, my but there's a large force acting on a very short period of time, and there's a small force but acting at a longer period of time. And if you calculate the area under the curve of these two um, regions here, you will see that okay, they have the same area, and therefore they they still have the same linear, uh, this the same impulse. So, so ganun yun ang gayare. So okay. Um, they have the same area, uh, so th therefore they have the same um, impulse. So, so the large force F acting for a short delta T has the same impulse as the small F acting on a longer delta T. So ganun yun nangyayari. Okay, questions? Are there any questions? Wala? Okay, next. So let's, um, uh, let's have some conceptual check. You are testing a new car using car crash test dummies. Consider two ways to slow the car from 90 kph to a complete stop. One, you let the car slam into a wall, bringing it to a sudden stop. And two, you let the car flow into a giant tub of gelatin, unlocking gelatin, <laughs> so that it comes to a gradual halt. In which case is there a greater impulse on the net force in the car? Case one, case two, the impulse is the same or not infer enough information given to the side. Uh, okay, which do you think is the answer? Um, I'll be giving you maybe 30 seconds to think of it. Uh, Today. Okay, so maybe 30 seconds have elapsed. What's the answer here? What's the answer here? You have the same um, initial speed. Therefore, you expect that it will give you the same impulse. Therefore, the answer here should be letter C. Uh, the answer here is letter C. The impulse is the same in both cases. Kasi nga, the large force, um, in one case, there's a large force acting on, the, on, uh, on a small time interval. In another case, there is a um, relatively smaller force acting but in a longer time interval. Therefore, um, uh, if you determine the area under the curve of this of the force time plot that will be generated here, then the impulse, the calculated area will be the same in both cases. Okay, is that clear? Clear but I don't. Okay. Now, um, now, impulse and kinetic energy are related. So um, uh, this impulse is reminiscent of your work, kinetic energy theorem. Remember, impulse and momentum are related by impulses is just a change in momentum. But um, the work kinetic energy theorem states that work is just a change in kinetic energy. Now, one important difference here is that, again, um, your, in, your energies or your work, uh, um, they are functions of, um, um, of, of position. Your forces there, F is a function of position um, R, say this position vector R. But here, your force now is now a function of time. Dito, hindi pwede maging explicitly dependent sa time niya. If there's some explicit time dependence, usually, hindi na conservative force yan. So, in, uh, um, uh, kaya tayo merong F is a function of time because um, these are non-conservative forces, which were the, um, the work kinetic energy, uh, of course, the work kinetic energy theorem may still hold, but um, your um, treatment of energy will be more com much more complicated. Kasi hindi mo naman agad-agad ma, ma take into, ac into account yung mga non-conservative forces and the work due to these non-conservative forces. Unlike, for example, in pulse momentum, you don't need to treat actually this. You only need to determine the change in momentum, which is again, minus times velocity and the type, the type of contact. Yun lang kailangan panapin. Which is, again, much more convenient for these types of forces wherein there's a short um, time interval um, where the force is uh, acted upon uh, acted on an object. So, mas maganda siyang ganito. Okay? 
questions. Questions, wala. In terms of momentum, the kinetic energy is, um, you can calculate actually the, the um, kinetic energy in terms of momentum is actually p squared over 2n. Um, please remember this equation. Uh, medyo kakailangan natin siya in the next uh, few lectures. And maybe in her higher physics courses, it's p squared over 2n. Okay? My questions pa? Wala? Wala? 